Well, how would you like to have your own little medieval village? That's what Federica Mascheroni has. We went to visit there. It's a beautiful part of Chianti. And this area, Tuscany, is just picturesque. It's almost like storybook. And here is this wonderful village where these wines that are made called Volpaia. And Frederica gives us a tour of the village of the winemaking facilities and tells us the story of Volpaia. And it's something I think you'll find very enchanting. I would like to introduce you, Ciao, Patrick, Federica. to... Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you Pet Welcome Pet to Volpaia. Federica Thank Mascheroni, welcome in uh, Tuscany, Patrick. Uh, yes. Federica, the owner here of Castello di Volpaia in the beautiful town of Volpaia. Yes. And she will take you to a great uh, wine tour and a tour of uh, her, her little town. Excellent. Thank you, Marco. And thank yeah. you. Ci vediamo dopo. A dopo. Ciao, Ciao. Marco. Ready Yes, start? I am ready. Wonderful. Okay. So we can go up to the village. Terrific. You live here? Yes, most of the time. Yeah. We are less than 50 people. Less than 50 people live yes, in the sir. town? Yes. Wow. And like, how old is this town? <laughs> goes back um, for sure in the 1172. 1172? Yes. Wow. Okay. It was already built. Uh -huh. <laughs> Does it take a lot of work to keep it going? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, a lot because what we wanted to do it was to keep the environment how they were. Mm -hmm. And so each single building had a function inside. Yeah. And so you go from bottling to fermenting and aging. So you basically took the buildings that were here and then installed a winery throughout the buildings. Yes, wow. exactly. That had to be hard. Yeah, and we have even a stainless steel pipeline that runs underground uh -huh. and connects all the buildings. Oh, really? So, so the wine runs through the pipeline underground? Yes, you can even walk on the wine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's great. So it's can a... you show me some of the buildings? Yes, yeah, for sure. Great. We can go around and I can show you. Terrific. This uh, is um, the older buildings. Mm -hmm. You see this? Uh, yes. It is uh, an old church and it was our first uh, vinification cellar. But if you want, I can show you inside so you can see the old structure of yes, the Yes, I'd like to church. see that, yeah. Yeah. And this little tiny door uh -huh. that you see there, yes. it is the door where you open and inside you find all the stainless steel pipeline. Oh, that leads through the town. Yes. Oh, wow. So this had to be put underground through the whole town? Yes, sir. Wow, how long did that take? <laughs> Crazy. In the past, it was different in the soil, and so we had to replace each single stone back uh, to cover and to all the... It was quite crazy. So basically, the winemaking goes on through the buildings, through the town, and then you transport it through these pipes. Yes, as much as possible, the fermentation from the top area, uh -huh. and the aging is down there. Wow. So we can get in. Yes. These are the small key that we have. <laughs> so you uh, have the key to the whole city? Yes. <laughs> and it's one for each single door. Different one? Oh, Definitely, wow. each wow. one. So to open this one, uh, you need the secret. The secret touch uh, is to hit Kick the, the door. Yes. And it's never for working at the first time. Yes. So. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Here we are what? in the church. So this was a church? Yes, it was a church. Wow. So um, this was before the fermenting um, location. So uh -huh. these tanks now we use only for the storage of the wine. Just, okay, so you store it here? Nothing. Yes, okay. uh, mm -hmm. it was the first place uh, where was controlled the temperature uh, in all over the Chianti Classico area. And you see up there, there is a stage. Oh, so that was the altar? Yes, that was the altar. So this you is see where all, you know, the parishioners were? The altar yes, was up here? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so you are in the church. Yeah, you see the, the ceiling is totally different. Uh, Do you pray the... over this wine? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a holy wine. It's a holy wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a holy wine. If you see, I, we, I can show you another little, little tiny secret part of the church yes. uh, that is still here. So we can get inside here. Uh huh. I bring you to another secret part of the church, uh -huh. eh, where the priest was changing his clothes. Uh, okay. And uh, you can see inside here that now is only a storage, yes. but 
you can still have the place where was hiding the wine and the bread. Oh, this little place up here? Yes, So exactly. why, why did they have to lock it? Ah, because it was very safe. I mean, everybody wanted it. <laughs> ah, I don't want it. storage <laughs> too. <laughs> yes, obviously. <laughs> Um, no, br no bread and wine. No, there, not okay. anymore because they finished it. This uh, is the reason why before was a uh, locket. I see. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So this is this is from 1100s? Or? Yeah, even what? before probably. Wow. Yeah, because 1172 is a document that speaks about Volpaya. So uh -huh. was already here at that time. So this was called Volpaya even back then? Yeah. Wow. Yes. And, and Volpaya means uh, fox? But, yes, exactly. Yeah. To say fox in Italian, yeah. we say volpe, uh -huh. and the end in A-I-A, -A, it mm. means a lot in the place. So a lot of foxes were still? here. Still? Yes. yes. Sometimes too many. So <laughs> they steal the food to my dog. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. As long as they don't steal the dog, it's no, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> that one, no. Now, we move to the real seller, the uh -huh. one that they are working uh -huh. full time. So we go to the upper part of the village. Mm -hmm where we have all the fermenting tanks. So, we get up to the fermenting tanks. You see, the other point of Volpaia, it's like the people that are working with us mm -hmm. are living, most of them with us. So you like, live in the village here? Yes, yeah. like this is an apartment uh, mm -hmm. that uh, a worker that is living inside. Mm -hmm. Here, up here, there is another one. Mm -hmm. So, it's not a ghost village, mm -hmm. but it is a village with a life of every day. Uh -huh. But at the same time, uh, you have uh, like this building here where we have the cooking class. Oh, cooking classes. Yes. Yeah. It's That's much fun. more an experience than a, a yeah. really chef. Uh, yeah. It's my mom that does. Uh, oh, your the, mother does? Yes. <laughs> That's really fun. <laughs> yes. She got a lot of experience with us and now right. yes, <laughs> she, yes. she has enough to, now to, she, to teach others. Yes. That's to great. Teach others. Yes, I look around. I mean, it's beautiful spaces that you have around yeah. here. Yeah. And the grapes goes inside the here where we have uh, the real technology of the fermentation, so mm -hmm. stainless steel. Mm -hmm. And again, these tanks got inside, going uh, through, the the, through the roof. Yeah. Please. I go? Yes. Thank you. So, you see, they look quite big. Oh, wow. But uh, actually, it's one piece, but separated in the middle. Uh -huh. So we have, 168, 30, 20, 10 different uh, dimensions of tanks uh, to be able to ferment it each single parcel separated uh -huh. and, uh, and get much more attention to the, uh, to the wine. Wow. So this is the first moment uh, when the wine arrives here, but then we use it in the second moment like for uh, keeping the wine before bottling. So it, now we can go up if you want. And it's we very can go strange up. because you're walking yeah. in at you know, very old buildings outside. You walk in, it's all modern equipment inside. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite a, a contrast. Yes, uh, that's amazing. Yes, nobody so can uh, imagine what it's uh, inside when it's. No, no, not at all. It's, yeah. it's really fascinating. Uh, so we can go upstairs and look? Yes, yeah. for sure. So um, we are now moving from uh, one building to the other one. Yes. So. Uh, Going through this, yeah. we are going through the bridge. Oh, so it's a bridge uh, across between. Yes, okay. uh, we are connected, and uh, we get up to the last floor of this building. Mm -hmm. We're bringing all the basket <laughs> of uh, grape. Uh -huh. That's what they do. Yes. Well, hand carry the baskets up these stairs. Okay. Yes, because we have to get to this room. Ah, I love the smell in this room. This is the room where we hang the grape mm -hmm. for the Vinsanto, the sweet wine. Ah, it's a dessert wine, so they, yes. they dry it, the grape? Exactly, it will be totally full of grape. Wow, Incredible. that's why I smell, so the smell stays, yeah. Even more intense in that time. And the casks look smaller. Yes, yeah. inside there is where we place uh, the juice mm -hmm. of the grape that we have uh, dried. Mm -hmm. And we forget, we close, we forget yeah. for four years. Four years in the cask? Yes. Wow, okay. And inside you have the mother, mm -hmm. that is uh, the east of the Vincenzo that was there the year before. Mm -hmm. And it will start like a very slowly process, a fermentation, mm -hmm. will be stop and go right. for four years. Wow, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So you can get some sweetness, but at the same time freshness in the wine. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So now we are moving uh -huh. and going to the other building. Please, four steps, watch your head. Okay. <laughs> It's because all the time we look down and we yes. never look up. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> yes. So this is another fermenting area. So it's again the process, uh, the, the beginning. 
Uh, in this case, uh, you have the tanks that can be open. Yes. And so you have different uh, uh, quantity of oxygen that get in contact. And yeah. here is the moment where the wine uh, uh, change from sugar to alcohol. Uh. And so it's the first uh, moment, uh, the first process. Uh, and now we will go down and we will get to the aging. So the okay. real moment uh, of the um, changing. We have to go down, down, down. <laughs> A lot of levels. Yes. All these tanks uh, has been uh, created and modulated for the dimension of the space. So it was basically uh, ideas of my, my father, obviously um, talking with the people that were making these tanks uh, and realizing them for this space. Yes. So you see the door over there? Yes. So from that door, we are going down to the aging cellar. Oh, okay. Yes. So that's the aging cellar? So yes, so we are going underground here. Cool. It's much cooler down here. Yes. Natural temperature. Really. This is a, the natural temperature just from yes. being underground. Yeah. Um, you see, these are the the barrels, mm -hmm. the classic barrels Big that chest. you use and reuse every year. Mm -hmm. So we don't uh, change, mm -hmm. uh, and we place inside the Chianti Classico and the Chianti Classico Reserva. So the Chianti Classico for one year, the Reserva for two years to round a little bit. So the first process upstairs for the fermentation and down here is for the aging. So that's what makes the uh, Chianti Classico, uh, that distinction is one extra year of aging in the, in the barrel. Yes, yeah. the, the law says uh, two years of aging, mm -hmm. doesn't say how. Right. So everybody has a little bit of freedom on the way. Right. Somebody does in the barrel, somebody in barrique, tonneau, cement. Yeah. So you have different options, but basically it's about the, the time of the aging. And with the additional aging, what does that do to the character of the wine? Um, for me, uh, usually I make a lot of difference also on the, in the choosing the type of the grape for the Chianti Classico and the Reserva. Mm -hmm. So when I choose the grape for my Reserva, mm -hmm. I choose grapes that can age longer and so it can have also a much longer life in the bottle. So you can keep the bottles for like 10, 15 years and you can have an evolution. When I choose the grape for my Chianti Classico, I think much more younger wine. Right. So to be drinking much more younger also. So you choose a different grape for that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the Classico is more firm, it can lay down for a longer period of yeah. time and develop. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, great. Yeah. So now where do we go? Now we have to go the, this way. Okay. And so we will get out to the, um, again to the light. Mm -hmm. So. So now where are we going to go? Yes, sorry. As always, I need to close all the doors okay, because keep, I need to keep yeah. my, my cool uh, climb inside. Yes. Now we are moving mm -hmm. and uh, we are going all around the village, the old village, and getting to the olive oil press. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, so you press olive oil here. Yes. Uh, it's a is that common in Tuscany or? It's common. Mm -hmm. Everybody does his own olive oil, but uh -huh. for passion. It's, uh, yeah. not, it's not for money. <laughs> not for money, no. okay. <laughs> the olive oil is only about love. <laughs> yes. So um, it, is, um, it is rare to have uh, your own uh, olive oil press. Mm -hmm. So it's nice uh, that I can show you That's great. this one. Yeah. Being uh, from Italian heritage, I love olive oil. So oh, good, I'm huh? excited <laughs> to see how you do it. So, ready. We get to the frantoio. What do you call it? Front frantoio. What frantoio, what does that mean? The olive oil press. Oh, nice. Yes, so uh, this is a very traditional system. Uh -huh. uh, in the back there, you have uh, the olives uh, washing, uh -huh. you can okay. say. Okay. So, so you wash the olives uh -huh. that you pull out from the tree. Mm -hmm. that they don't, we don't wait that they fell down. Okay. We take down from you the tree, them. so mm -hmm. quite green. Then it goes inside this machine where you have uh, the millstone, uh -huh. so stone below, stone on top. It's like smooth surface. And, yeah. Yes, and crush everything. And why is it important that it's crushed with stone? It's, uh, they say, uh, the tradition says that the stone gives a, 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 a better, special, uh, a best, uh, <laughs> the best flavor to the olive oil. Okay. Yes, so it comes out uh, like a pulp. Okay. It will be wood mm -hmm. because of the seeds. It will be uh, water, mm -hmm. olive oil, and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we need to do a first separation, that is the liquid from the solid. Right. So from, with this machine, we separated the liquid from the solid. So the, the pits or stems, all that goes yes, in the stone. Yes, goes in, yes. And then uh, you have uh, the liquid part, it mm. is um, olive o uh, oil mm. and, um, and water mm -hmm. together in mm. emulsion. And so we need to extract that one. Mm -hmm. And so we have two systems. 
One is the normal centrifugation, mm -hmm. so it goes centrifugate. It's like a centrifuge, upper, okay. Yes. Okay. Upper level for the oil, lower one for the water. Uh -huh. uh, this one is something unique. It's because uh, oil and uh, water have a different surface tension. Mm -hmm. And these are like thousands of metal surface that goes inside and comes out. Me uh, metal surface? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Like knife. Right. And so only the um, oil will stick on the knife and the water will remain down. Ah, so they separate it through with just by the very oil gently, sticking to metal? Yes, ah, very gently. Okay. And the oil will comes out, it's very strong, it's not something that you can buy outside. Right. It's so different the oil when it comes out from the machine. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's cloudy, mm -hmm. so we need to do a clarification with cotton, so small filtration, mm -hmm. and then it's ready. And that's it? In a couple of hours. Think about uh, years uh, to uh, make the wine and yeah. then a couple of hours to So you make get the to oil. enjoy the olive oil right away. Yes, yeah, that's exactly. Great. That's great. It's so incredibly strong and special. Yeah. How much olive oil do you produce? It's so tiny. It's only for passion. All this equipment, just a tiny bit? Yeah. It's because we, um, we use this also for other producers. So mm. they come also other nice. people. So we don't use only for our production. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Fun. Very fun. Okay. So we can move and get out again to the to the village. Okay, great. Prego. Thank you. So now we have to see if we can find Marco. Yeah, so where where is he now? I, <laughs> how are you, Patrick? Uh, great. How, how was your tour? Do you have a present for me? Uh, this is for us to drink tonight. <laughs> yes. Only for you two? Only, ah. only for us. I'm not sure it's enough. Uh, just a for beautiful me anyway. bottle, yeah. yes. Fantastico. Yeah, it was. Thank no. you, Federica. No, grazie mille, Marco. It thank you so pleasure. much. Fantastic tour. It was very thank nice you. to meet you. Yeah, Marco, really. thank you. Ciao. Thank, thank, you. thank you for saying this. Thank you, Patrick. Really great. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you. And come back, please. We will. With much more relax, uh, much more time. We're going so to bring, bring friends. Okay, of course you are. Bene. Grazie mille. Ciao, buona giornata. Ciao. 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 So, Frederica, the, the property and the grounds here are just beautiful, so uh, there must be some history here. Uh, how did your family come into this property? Here was a place where was making one since ever. Mm -hmm. But what happened was like my grandfather came here in the 1966 mm -hmm. and he felt in love with this place, mm -hmm. came back home and uh, came back to my grandma <laughs> and said, I bought a winery and my mom, my grandma said, sorry, I didn't understand. What do, what do you mean? <laughs> So he already bought it without telling her. Yes, that <laughs> was my grandfather. It was always like this. Uh, yeah. Get the idea, buy it, and then come back and say, oh, you know what, I have a news. <laughs> 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 and so everything started with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, the main job has been done by my mother. Mm -hmm. That um, um, she is the one from Florence. She was fell in love more and more with Volpaia. Mm -hmm. But at the time, was everything much more like a, a game, a play. Uh, a so hobby. Hobby, yeah. like a hobby. But uh, she felt in love with the guy from Milano, that was my father, uh, at the seaside, the coast, uh, relax. Uh -huh. And at that time, when you were getting married, uh, usually you were moving to the house of the, your husband yeah. and not really coming back to this place. But mm -hmm. she didn't realize how much my father also felt in love with this place. Mm -hmm. So when they got married, Actually, my mother got has a wedding present for Paya. Wow. Yes. So An incredible. The, so, so your grandparents gave it to her, to her as a yes. present. So your father then uh, decided to move uh, from Milano down to here. Actually, yeah. no, it was not like this. He was uh, even much more crazy. He was working in Milano uh -huh. from Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. And my mother was taking care about us up in Milano. Even if we are born in uh, Florence, and uh, so we were living up there, and every weekend they were moving down mm -hmm. to Florence to Volpaia, was at that time very long the road, yes. and and start the project. It was a different historical moment. Everything mm -hmm. was much more slow. Now is everything too fast. Yeah. Uh, before you were sending a letter instead of an email, right. so the timing was totally different. So was able to manage from outside. Now we are almost living inside the village mm -hmm. full time. So. Yeah. The time has changed. That's and it. Uh, how has the winery developed over time now? So your mother basically said it was a hobby, but then got more serious about yeah. it. And now how did you get involved? And, and now what is the winery doing today? 
It's um, the the project became bigger and bigger. Now it's also my brother and I that are involved inside. Mm -hmm. So instead of uh, having only a winery and making only wine, mm -hmm. we wanted to keep uh, the environment really how it was. So when you get here, you feel like you are in the 12th century. Yeah. And then uh, we want to give a life to the village, uh, uh, something to to keep um, something inside. So um, we have a bakery. There is a, a restaurant, uh, then we have an apartment, mm -hmm. uh, uh, agriturismo, rooms, uh, so cooking class, as mm -hmm. we mentioned before, or like mm, tasting, mm -hmm. things like this that makes a, uh, a life inside the village. And so also the people that works for us lives inside here. So when your grandfather bought this place, he didn't just buy a, a winery, the whole village came with it was two-thirds of the village okay. so we don't own everything it's more than enough <laughs> <laughs> for yeah. sure it's more than enough uh -huh. but yes two-thirds of the village and then uh, my father bought a few other pieces mm -hmm. so we changed a few other things mm -hmm. so as as we were we're thinking it's like always a work in progress it's yeah. never stopped right uh, since ever it's like uh, always developing yes yeah, and that's what's interesting here. You know, I, I have visited many wineries, but this is a full village, like you said, and you've have you've got rooms, uh, you know, for people to stay in uh, for rent. You've got uh, restaurants, you got bakery. Yeah. It is. It's like a community in a village here, so it has that yeah. that feel to it. Uh, you know, gardens also, and and uh, you know, vegetables. Yeah, you grow a lot of food here. Yeah. So it's uh, so this is a lifestyle uh, that is very unique. Um, Yes, for sure, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. When you get here, you get in a totally different um, time. I don't know. You get back to the medieval, where it's, it's the sun that manages your life. So summertime, mm. it's crazy. Yeah. Starting at 5 a.m., finishing at 9 a.m., yeah. <laughs> 9 p.m. And then in the winter, it's everything much more calm. How does this influence the wines? So now uh, you make uh, a lot of wine. How many w bottles do you make per year? It's, uh, we, um, here in Volpaia, we do around uh, 200, 250,000 bottles. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have also a small other property in Marima, Prelius, mm -hmm. so on the seaside. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do the definification also of that property, around like 80,000 bottles. Wow. And, but basically what for us is very important is the agriculture. So mm -hmm. organic growing, all. So you grow all organic? All organic. Mm -hmm. And also very focused on the um, indigenous um, autochthone clones of Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. So we have a special wine. It's called uh, Il Puro. Mm -hmm. Puro because it's a pure Sangiovese from Volpaia. Uh -huh. It comes from a vineyard that is called Casanova. Mm -hmm. So in this little vineyard, we have uh, 25 different types of Sangiovese coming uniquely from Volpaia. So nothing wow. that you can buy outside. The El Puro wine, uh, mm -hmm. you use this for charity? At the first vintage that we came out, uh, we decided to uh, give it as a, a charity project. Uh, so all the profit was going to the um, uh, to a charity project with Save the Children, so mm -hmm. to build the, um, so to get the water. Oh, well. Well, mm -hmm. yes. To, to create a well yes, for, for water for, for them. Water, uh, for them, yes. Well, that, that's so it was totally, then it became obviously a part of the winery, so it's now not anymore for charity, but uh, it started as the, like this. It was an idea of my brother that was really appreciated, yeah. probably because he became father at that time, uh -huh. so he felt very much uh, the, the children's side, uh, yes. It means pure, so this is a pure wine. Yeah. And uh, what's the experience of that wine like compared to maybe some of the other ones that you make? A lot of people, when they taste that wine, uh, they almost don't even realize that there is a normal Chianti Classico. I can say that sometimes they confuse like a Brunello because it has much more like power. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Brunello is much southern, much warmer. So sometimes the bigger, they are a bit bigger, the wine there yeah. compared to up here where it's pressure because of the altitude. You have some altitude here, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's very the intensity of the flavors are there. Uh, really incredible. Now also, uh, I was told that uh, one of your wines was just rated, I think, the number three wine in the world last yes. year. So tell, <laughs> so did that bring a lot of attention to you? Uh, I think uh, w when I received the news, uh, yeah. uh, I was a journalist that told me, uh -huh. said that I was making a lot of questions. I said, you are making joke of me. It's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it to make joke of me. Yeah. And actually it was the reality. So it was a lot of attention, it was uh, amazing for us, but uh, what was very nice, uh, all the friends from uh, here around were very, very happy because yeah. 
other producer from Chianti Classico got so high, yes. but none of them with the Chianti Classico. Yeah. They came uh, in the top 100 uh, with the Super Tuscan, but wow. not really with the Chianti Classico Reserva. That one is a very special. It is 100% of Sangiovese, mm -hmm. selected from all over the property. So they are the best grapes uh, uh, that w are made there. Yeah. So very exciting uh, to have that. Is that the first time uh, your winery has won a big award like that? We were in the top 100 already for a couple of other times, mm -hmm. uh, but never so high. Wow. Uh, the third one, uh, the problem would be when in October I will have to talk in the front of a lot of people. That that would be really a problem. Oh, for now me. you have to go explain <laughs> yeah. this to the winemaker how you did this? <laughs> yes. And yes. you don't like that? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, 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 um, I can say I'm shy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, not, I cannot be anymore. <laughs> wow. Yes. But that's, uh, that's going to open up a whole new world. And yeah. it's interesting you said, because the other winemakers around, which, uh, you know, I wonder if they get along very well and they support each other or they get jealous of each other. I think uh, the French are much uh, intelligent than us. Yeah. And so they are much more making community and move all around together. So this is the reason what is for me sometimes the big power of the French. Mm -hmm. But I think in this area we are understanding more that if we are moving all together mm -hmm. uh, we can do some more job out mm -hmm. so like we just did an association mm -hmm. Vignaioli di Radda uh -huh. that is uh, all the producer mostly of them uh, the producer from Radda so from this uh, little um, area of the Chianti Classico mm -hmm. are moving together doing tasting together share a new experience mm -hmm. together so this it could be more uh, important things uh, to share with the people outside. Yeah, this uh, area of Chianti is called the uh, Rada. Yeah. Um, so how many wineries would be in that area? It, uh, they are th around 30, mm -hmm. uh, 24 in the association, mm -hmm. and so 24 are the Vignaioli di Rada. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the future more, we yes. never know. <laughs> we hope all of us uh, will become uh, all together and move all together. Mm -hmm. That is very important. That's yes. great. So now you collaborate rather than compete. Yeah, yeah, we try. We are from Tuscany. Yeah. You know, I, each city in Tuscany is fighting to each other, <laughs> so it's not so easy for us. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so we are trying to, yeah. So there's a, there's some history of war amongst the people here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> definitely. Yeah, to this so. day. <laughs> so, uh, how many different wines do you bottle? Different labels. We have uh, the classic. Chianti Classico and Chianti Classico Reserva. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have uh, three single vineyards. Mm -hmm. so, so these three wines got the name from the three vineyards. Mm -hmm. Colta Sala, mm -hmm. Balifico, Casanova El Puro. Then there is a Vinsanto, the mm -hmm. sweet wine, Malvasia in Trebbiano, the one that is made up to the attic. Mm -hmm. And then we did a funny and nice project that is 100% um, of uh, uh, Sangiovese mm -hmm. mm, uh, Spumante. So oh, it's it's champagne noir, yes. yes, Metodo Classico, uh, white, so that, uh, millesime, so that is the other project. What's your uh, most popular one? I think you can't Classico Reserva, even yeah. before the top 100, yes. but that, that one is uh, one that is very well known all over the world. Yes. And then you're, uh, do you have a favorite that you like to drink most? Depends about the season. Me. And depends what I'm eating, uh -huh. and depends the friends that I have, and depends about the vintage. Uh, I'm a picky one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, talk about some of those things. So let's yeah. say that I just bought uh, that wine that got rated uh, number three in the world, yeah. uh, the Chianti Classico Reserva, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. now I'm taking this home. What should I do with it? How do I it's enjoy um, it? What do I eat with it? That is a 15 vintage. 15 mm -hmm. vintage is incredible vintage. Mm -hmm. Very fruitful mm -hmm. uh, and very ready. Mm -hmm. So it is a wine that since the beginning was showing perfectly. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you age a bit longer, it's, it's nicer, mm -hmm. but it also depends what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you, you boil it at least 24 bottles okay. and you have one each year. So you can, have the it, <laughs> you can have an evolution and see the evolution of the wine. Yes. Uh, that's an interesting point because when people sometimes only buy one or two bottles, they can't do that. But if you yes. buy 12, 24, now year over year, you can see how the wine changes. Yes. And that's kind of an interesting thing to do. Yeah, yeah it's very interesting uh, because you see really the evolution of the wine and what it's the moment. So if it's the 2015, I open it, how long do I want to let that breathe? Uh, 15 was uh, quite a ready vintage. Mm -hmm. um, so one hour and then I think you can it's serve. Ready. Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, what I like 
Fermace is not really to decan the wine. Mm -hmm. I prefer to discover the wine in the glass. Okay. So especially the wines I think from Chianti Classico are really nice because when you start uh, you have a like evolution in the glass mm -hmm. and you can find all the different flavors step by step. Right. It doesn't show off. Uh, it's not a show off wine. Right. So it's interesting because uh, uh, sometimes letting it develop in the glass over time uh, you get to experience it uh, more closely, more intimately. Yeah. 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 That's, and what food would I pair that with? Uh, we are in Tuscany. I'm sorry, I'm not really vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> no apologies. <laughs> okay, so for sure with vegetable, wherever, but with the steak is the best. With the steak, yeah, it's a steak, yes, it's a steak one. Steak. Uh, not too, not too much sauce on top. Very mm -hmm. simple food as we do in Italy. We want the flavors that comes out. Mm -hmm. Not, not too many things on top. So a steak on the grill, some oil, mm -hmm. salt, and a glass of wine would be wow. <laughs> There's this one room uh, where you have many bottles and yeah. all by the different years, uh, some, some of the older vintages and so on. Uh, what do you call that area? Library. The library. I mean, yeah. It's like my grandfather was a printer, so we have a lot of books in the house and we have a lot of wines in the library. Yeah. It's like a double library. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you walk in there and say, hmm, I think I'll do this year and you pull those uh, out? My mother will cut my hands if I do something like this. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. So no, those no. are like precious. It's, uh, yeah. Yes, it's only for a special occasion mm. uh, that we pull out some bottles, uh, but they are never... It's, it's funny because it looks like a big village, right. but it's, it's tiny and we don't have a lot of rooms. We are now creating another one for storage more wine, uh -huh. but actually we don't have enough space uh, to storage uh, so much bottles that we wish. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, from what kind of barrels do you use? So you, you have barrel storage, obviously. Yeah. Uh, where do you get your barrels from and uh, what kind of toast do you put on them? So we have the big barrels uh, that we use for the Chianti Classico and the Reserva. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the single vineyards, we use uh, the Barrique and the Tonneau. What does that mean? Tonneau is a type of, uh, of Barrique that is a bit bigger. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so we just uh, bought the new Tonneau downstairs, uh, so are the one that just arrived. And uh, do you put uh, what kind of, how much toast in the barrel? It's, um, we use uh, the type of the wood, mm -hmm. it's um, Allier. Mm -hmm. We decided at the end to use uh, French barrels. Uh -huh. We oh. did a tasting. You say that with a, like a like I, I you know. have you yes. just had to do it, but you didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, we did a tasting: yeah. Italian uh, um, barrels, barrels uh, French, and American. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, but the winner was the French one. <laughs> so you had to go with it. So yes, yeah. we so it's, uh, we use this uh, French barrels, uh, and so for the barrels, sorry, barrique and uh, for uh, the tonneau. Terrific. And these uh, two type of uh, uh, barrels, the smaller one, we use for the single vineyards wine. What's your future vision for your winery now? Where do you want to see it go? <laughs> I want my brother in this moment to answer to this question. He is much brighter than me, and he can. He's a, he's the guy that can see the future. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm the day by day. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that leaves the everything a bit too much sometimes. <laughs> 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 so. What I see the future of the winery, probably I would see keep going on this uh, path mm -hmm. because I think we are on the right one for a lot of things, uh, especially for the passion that we put inside. That yeah. is the very important things. It's not you don't drink only a bottle of wine. I think when you drink wines, you have to drink uh, also the history and the family that are behind. Well, that's um, an important aspect. So, how important is knowing the story of the wine, the winemaker, the winery? How important is that to the experience of the wine? I think it's a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, and sometimes it, it happens that people come to say, you know what? When I try the wine in a place, uh, in the place where they make it, is different than when I try the same wine outside in your house. Mm -hmm. It's not that one. It's the same exactly wine. We don't. Nobody does different wines. So right. It's only that you get the experience. You get the real feeling of the place and you understand more what is there and what is the, the soul of the place and so the soul of the wine. And yeah. I think that's what's lost in blind tastings, right? Because yeah. it's literally, it's blind. You're just tasting just the, the wine. But when you, you, when you go and experience a place, the people, uh, you know, the, the environment, yeah. it changes the experience of the wine. So there, there is that, that element of, of connection that should be there when you're experiencing wine. Yes, I think it's very important because for sure, once that comes from elevation, 
from the same area, mm -hmm. but and wines that are coming from much more a, a valley mm -hmm. have a totally different style, and the soil makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, when people says uh, is uh, everything in blind tasting, I say, okay, yeah, I appreciate, but I think you should anyhow when you want to do the last judgment, not to read the name of the producer, because mm -hmm. obviously otherwise you get some influence, right. but read where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Because you need also to understand the wine. Uh, and, and so why it's so thin? Because yeah. it's very stony and, um, and sandy the soil. Why it's so powerful? Because it's on clay and a much lower position. And right. so this is the reason why probably you like more or less, uh, right. but it's, you have to think the place uh, to understand more. Wow. Well, yeah. uh, thank you very much for the tour of, of this village. And also thank you for sharing all this information and background and history about your winery. No, thank you very much to come all over here to Italy to share with me, my family and my wines. No, really appreciate it. Grazie mille. Grazie, mille. <laughs> Grazie a te. What a wonderful hostess Federica was. An amazing environment, spectacular wines, a storybook type of a setting. Can it get any better than this? Chianti is a wonderful region, world renowned, and I think this is perfectly expressive of it. So I'm glad you were with me for this particular journey. Let's talk about Chianti. So, uh, what is a Chianti wine, and what's the difference between a Chianti, a, a, a Chianti Classico, and a Reserva? Yeah, so Chianti, generically speaking, is a synonymous of Tuscany. Mm -hmm. uh, so, is the area uh, usually between, uh, everybody knows, between uh, Florence and Siena. Mm -hmm. Even though there are different areas uh, in Tuscany, they, they, they are called Chianti. So you have the Chianti area around Florence, mm -hmm. the Chianti area between Florence and Siena. You have the Chianti area close to Pisa. So, so, it's, so a, it's a huge region. It's, it's a huge region, uh, different pockets. Uh, and then you can narrow it down. When you say Chianti Classico, there is only a small area between Florence and Siena that can be called Chianti Classico. So when you say Chianti Classico is the area between Florence and Siena, so it's a narrower area that defines a smaller terroir in order to produce Chianti Classico. Mm -hmm. And uh, also when you say Chianti Classico, you have to have a certain amount of Sangiovese to be your predominant grape. Mm -hmm. So you have to have at least 85% of Sangiovese, and then the Chianti Classico allows the producer to add the rest with whatever grape each winery think will complement uh, their Sangiovese. And then what's the Reserva? And the Reserva is, is only uh, a term that it can be used if you age and you release the wine uh, one more year. So you decide to keep the wine in barrels or in the bottle or in an aging uh, storage for one more year before it gets released. And does that usually add a little bit more price to it? It usually does the price. You're keeping the wine uh, sitting uh, without being able to, to generate revenues for one more year. So usually reservas uh, are a little bit more expensive. And usually, uh, to be honest with you, when, you, when a producer decides to make a reserva, they usually attach their best vineyards. They right. attach their best grape. It's not just uh, one more year. The requirements to have more a year, but most of the wineries, when they attach their reserva name uh, to one of their wines, is because they want to highlight uh, a specific quality for their wine. So if I'm looking at a wine list and I see a, a Chianti Reserva, that, uh, that's probably their better grapes from that particular wine producer. It usually is, yes. They, they want to send a message. They want to highlight and tell the world that I have this plot of land with these particular qualities that I want mm -hmm. to see what it does. And I want to give it a little bit more time. So that's a showcasing basically their better stuff. Yes. When do you like to serve Chianti? Uh, Chianti is almost like an everyday. Uh, mm -hmm. It's good. Um, to start with the Chianti because of uh, its freshness, uh, but also the acidity in Chianti because of Sangiovese, mm. it's really, really good uh, for, for steak, for second courses. So um, I like to serve Chianti for me. Um, I om almost call it like the, the week uh, day wine because it's easy, it's easy to drink. And so I drink maybe Chianti during the week. And then when it comes to the weekends, I drink Brunello and Barolo. Uh -huh. uh, so you drink a lot of days. I, yes, it's, uh, every day is a, is a good day to drink wine. <laughs>
Roberto, uh, thank you for taking the time to sit down and explain to us about this region and your winemaking. It's a big pleasure for me. Thanks to you for coming all over the way. Yeah, we're happy to be here. There's a big history here in, uh, in Tuscany, in Chianti, and uh, I think a lot of people aren't that familiar with it. So what, what should people know about this region? Well, uh, Tuscany is, is in the uh, heart of Italy. And it's a region which has an enormous history, an historical background. So before Roman times, there were the Etruscans living here. Mm. So it was a big civilization. And in Chianti, so in this little spot area between Firenze and Siena, mm. we were already uh, settling in, you know, seventh, eighth, seventh uh, century BC. Seven hundred BC. Yeah. Wow. Okay. BC. So we're talking about of a long, long human presence here. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, they were already growing wine. That Tuscans. long ago? Yes. Oh. There are founts around uh, this area mm -hmm. uh, which uh, you can witness this. Mm -hmm. um, and Radda, within the Chianti area, it's actually the, the, I would say, the most still wild and historically core piece of the whole Chianti area. So we are really at, at the heart of it. And Rada is, is, is that place. Rada, Rada in Chianti. And uh, so now Chianti describes this region, um, and there's a special designation here for a certain type of wine making. Can you talk about that? Chianti has always been uh, known as to be a, a, a wine producing area of Cornish wine mm -hmm. uh, in history. And the wine produced in Chianti used to be called. Chianti, of course. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, the wine produces, uh, produ the pr wine production in, in Chianti is called Chianti Classico mm -hmm. and has this black rooster as symbol. Why the black rooster? What's that about? Well, the black rooster, the legend says, it, 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 it goes back to the fight between the Siena and the, and the Florentine Republic. Mm -hmm. The border between the two republics in the 14th 14th, 15th, 16th century, went uh, on and over, passing by Chianti through. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Radda has historically been more, more in the, uh, the influence of Florent mm -hmm. Florentine Republic. They were stronger, mm -hmm. they were more powerful, and they were also smarter. And mm -hmm. the Black Rooster refers to the fact that to set the borders actually they 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 make kind of of um uh, of contest to say okay we florentine we have a black rooster symbol and you Sinese, you have a white rooster and um we're going to look uh, by each side so in in from florence to the south mm -hmm. and siena to the north a rider with a horse rider mm -hmm. will start off and when they meet that will be the border then and so uh, they said, as soon as a uh, rooster sinks, the both riders will start mm -hmm. to the south and to the north, and we'll see what happens. So it's said to 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 be that the Florentines didn't feed the rooster for about one week. Mm -hmm. So the black rooster from Florence woke up at about two o'clock in the night, and the, and, the, huh. and the rider set to the south and and came much much more to the south than the Sinis could come to the north. So, upon this legend, the Consorzio Chianti Classico took the black rooster, actually as a Florentine mm, dominance, if you want, as mm -hmm. symbol in 1924 when the Consorzio Chianti Classico was uh, founded. Wow, they really, uh, they really bring their history into the future. <laughs> I mean, they put it on the bottles today, uh, yeah. the symbol of that rooster. Uh, but uh, ge geographically, we're closer to Siena, I think, here than, we are. than Florence. Yeah. We are. Radda is the northest part of the province of Siena, mm -hmm. but has linguistic and historical influences which go more back to the Florentine past than ever. But anyway, it's always, you know, Tuscany, it's a place where every village uh, is kind of uh, f f theoretically fighting against the other ones to be the best, the right. nicer, the... Uh, the smart and so still a lot of competition here. There is, yeah. Although I mean, the generations pass and it's changing. Yeah. For, uh, for, for luckily, yeah. luckily. So we all part of the Chianti Classico uh, uh, appellation, mm -hmm. and but every there are many, not many, but there are some villages being part of the Chianti Classico appellation, 
and every village actually has also a, some some particular issues distinguishing the, also the wine production within the Chianti Classico, mm. uh, but with some differences. So in order to label your wine Chianti Classico, uh, Classico you have to uh, produce uh, San Genovese grape yeah, the, in this region. Yeah, the, it's, it's quite, quite a uh, strictly controlled appellation, mm -hmm. DOCG, mm -hmm. um, Chianti Classico. Well, the, the latest uh, rules uh, say you have to have at least 80% San Giovese, mm -hmm. which is our historically uh, seen and, 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 and mo mo most uh, important variety. Mm -hmm. And you can add to this about up to 15% of international varieties, mm -hmm. but 80% must be San Giovese. So then the growers, the winemakers, they can decide in which quantity, in which percentage to, to change it. So it's very... I see uh, labels that say uh, Chianti Classico and then Chianti Classico Reserva. What's the Reserva? Reserva is supposed to be the actually the, the best selection of a Chianti Classico. Mm -hmm. There are different rules to control it. Mm -hmm. There are different uh, chemical mm -hmm. standards which have to be fulfilled. And riservare means to, 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 to put apart and to reserve for the, for the future. Right. Uh, so traditionally, the riserva is a better selection mm. of the Chianti Classico. Yes, but Chianti Classico riserva. There is nowadays another, an, another um, class of Chianti Classico called Gran Selezione, mm -hmm. which is starting over in the last years, which should be a selection of the a Reserva selection, so to say. But Chianti Classico and Chianti Classico Reserva are the main wines we produce in our appellation. And do they have uh, different winemaking rules around aging or anything like that with the Reserva? Oh, well, the rules are different, but uh, mainly it's, it's, it's a matter of, of time, of aging time. Uh, by the low, you can have a Chianti Classico uh, going to the market after one year, so f uh, first of November of the following year after mm -hmm of a picking, and the reserva has to be two years plus at least three months in bottle aging. But then it, it's not compulsory that it has to come out. As every, right. every estate, every producer decides on its own. How did you end up in the winemaking business? Very much by chance, mm -hmm. or maybe not. Who knows, actually. <laughs> First of all, this area of Chianti uh, had been uh, mostly abandoned mm -hmm. in the 60s because of... As recently as the 60s? Yes. And it was n nobody living here? There were people living here, of course, mainly concentrated in villages, but mm -hmm. the the land, mm -hmm. land houses and estates and, and, and farmhouses were mostly abandoned. It, it's a very particular place. Mm -hmm. Life was not easy. For, for peasants, for, for winemakers, very hard soil, very mineral, mm -hmm. very chalky, hard, mm -hmm. uh, difficult conditions. So uh, uh, crop sharing was the system uh, in those mm -hmm. times. And uh, so very quite, quite, quite hard living conditions. Mm -hmm. And as soon as industry uh, started to, to grow in the uh, neighboring areas, Firenze or Valda Arno, uh, River Valley, and so they all took the chance and left. Mm. And uh, it was very quick. After World War II, it was a very, very quick uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And in the 60s, mainly in the 70s, the, there was, it started to, you know, to be re-inhabited uh, uh, very slowly, but it was, uh, it was quite a big, big change. Mm. Actually, there were mm, people from outside rediscovering the, the charm of this place and mm -hmm. the potential of, of these hills, of, of this wine production area, coming, coming over and, and settling back and going to the, to the country. My family was one of them. I mean, we, I, I was born in Milano, mm -hmm. Milan, so northern Italy, and my father was actually, a, uh, I would say, a pragmatical idealist. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to move out of the city. He wanted to change a life. He wanted to, to grow wine and to learn something completely different. Mm -hmm. And he had the courage to do it mm -hmm. in those unsuspectable times. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I was a little boy when he, he brought us all, uh, the family, to Radda, mm -hmm. 
and it started all from from the beginning again. So to plant vineyards, to to set the houses, to set our terraces, dry stone terraces, which are uh, specific, particular of this area, mm -hmm. uh, from zero, from zero on. I grew up with him as a teenager. You know, as teenagers do, I was kind of saying, "Well, you know, father, I don't want if I want to study to go on study." And then he would said, he would say, "Look, you see that vineyard to." take the tractor and go, we have to plow them before it rains, so go on, so we can talk about it later on. Okay, so I, I went off and I worked 12 hours on the tractor, and when I came back the evening, I was so tired, I wouldn't m spend a word with my father. <laughs> and after this, I understood why he was doing this. So I studied a lot afterwards. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, well, I, I grew with him and I learned a lot. The love for this place and for this country and for, for wine making, I got it for him. I followed quite a different way. I studied languages and literatures. I traveled the world. And actually, my father, George, in 99, died very quickly. I had to decide very, very roughly what to do with the little family estate, right. being the only child. And with the, with the power of, uh, uh, I don't know, unconsciousness, mm -hmm. I said, yes. We have to do it. We have to continue. I didn't. I couldn't bring over my heart to say we we sell it. We go away after mm. 25 years of passion. Yeah. Um, so I I I, th I I forgot everything I was doing before, and I became actually winemaker with my wife. Well, so what's interesting is this is an extremely popular winemaking area now, and uh, that not that long ago. There weren't many people here doing it, so it, it had to, I guess, blow up very quickly as far as the amount of people that came in. And I guess there are people like your dad, you know, that, that showed up and said, new life, new lifestyle, we're going to develop this land, develop these vineyards. And now, you know, Chianti produces world-class wines, you know, spectacular wines. Um, what, how would you describe the, the Sangiovese grape? How does it compare to other varietals? Sangiovese grows mainly Two, in two places in Italy, in uh, northern of the Apennine, so in Emilia Romagna, mm -hmm. and in central, and well, actually in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. Sangiovese is it, it, it is a very complicated uh, variety to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, is is quite vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, needs an enormous amount of heat and of uh, sunshine to to ripen, mm -hmm. and uh, is not is is quite tough cookie, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's not for everybody, but it has found here um, probably one of almost a unique ambiente uh, area mm -hmm. to grow and to give its, its its best. Talking especially about Radda, I think it's it's nice to say, I think it, in English you call it the Cinderella story. Yes. Uh, in Chianti area, Radda was always, had always been seen as, you know, very quite high in altitude, very rough conditions. Wine growing, wine making in that there was apart some very beautiful um, uh, exceptions, really really difficult. So mm -hmm. Radda, you, to have a, a vineyard in Radda would mean you know, the poor cousins up there were, where the wolves are howling. You know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and our neighboring villages around us always Chianti Classico. In the time of the Renaissance of the Chianti Classico, we were saying talking about 70s mm -hmm. and the 80s, we're already producing very very good and, and, and important wines mm -hmm. and with some few exceptions uh, we had much more trouble for it in Radda because Sangiovese needs as I was saying a long 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 maturation time a bit lot long, long sun exposure which was not always there mm -hmm. um, why I was talking about Cinderella now is kind of completely upset situation uh, climate change uh, affects, of course, wine production in the whole world and not only wine production in the Mediterranean area, in Tuscany as well. And Radda has uh, almost, I think, uh, quite a big success in its wines also because of this, because we take advantage of the fact that we have more heat, mm -hmm. more sun to have our Sangiovese ripen much more than before. Mm -hmm. keeping the minerality and the freshness which are owned of the territory of Radda. So the two elements are a bit of the, the kind of a secret of the, 
of the of the success of Rad. So Cinderella, from a very poor girl in a very hard life, washing on her knees the floor, we kind of princess. We can become a princess. Look mm. at me. I mean, you can see in me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh... I know that in other regions now in Tuscany, um, you know, you have Chianti and San Genovese, you know, very well known. Uh, but there's this, you know, kind of maybe more modern thing called uh, Super Tuscans. So what does that mean and how do they compare to, you know, uh, other areas of, of the region? One has to see it historically as well. Super Tuscan, it's a term which was invented by the press, mm -hmm. okay. the English press. Mm -hmm. And by uh, this name was referring to the the fact that producers in Chianti and even elsewhere in Tuscany were obliged to produce following very very specific uh, rules, mm -hmm. variety, quantities, uh, yields per hectare, and so on and so. And some uh, smart and and good producers just wanted to do something else, mm -hmm. or, or maybe in those times, we're talking about 70s and 80s, something mm -hmm. better right. than what uh, the rules of the denomination would allow to. Mm -hmm. And so they started to, to experiment, and uh, mainly blending Sangiovese to some international varieties, mm -hmm. mainly Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Mm -hmm. um, but there were wines which were, uh, in those times, often uh, powerful, more structured, so bigger wines, mm -hmm. more, you know, uh, uh, imponent wines, uh, but they didn't have a definition. They could only be, in those times, vini rossi, so just plain red wines. Right. But they were actually qualitatively often above the average production of a denominazione. Mm -hmm. And so they started calling super task, and also because they were usually more concentrated in alcohol and extract, so you know, powerful wines, super right. Tuscans. Now the, I think the phenomena has changed. Mm -hmm. The production of the, for instance, Chianti Classico and Chianti Classico Riserva and Gran Selezione is qualitatively average very high. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's not much more um, a kind of, of need of, uh, of, of, of uh, a renewed thing such as super Tuscan were in those times. Uh, so that's it. So it's interesting because what you're saying is that if you're a wine producer and you want to call your wine Chianti, there's very strict rules on how that yeah. wine's got to be built, you know, how it's got to be produced, etc. But some people want to work out of bounds, or maybe they're in an area that's not designated for it, and that's how they came up with. So this is a this is not an official label, uh, Super Tuscan. This is kind of a media label that people try exactly. to throw them all into that bucket. And I imagine they could be very different you know, exactly. from one to the other. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, Super Tuscan were a definition of the press, but there were Super Tuscans in Chianti Classico area, Super Tuscan in Bulgari, and elsewhere in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there were also, it, it, it was also a matter of communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had its its sense, but I would like to have one second to tell something very specific. There is a difference between Chianti and Chianti Classico. Mm -hmm. Chianti is this area, mm -hmm. and the denomination, the DOCG appellation, insisting on the Chianti geographical area is the Chianti Classico. Mm -hmm. So the wine produced here mm -hmm. in, in Radda, Gaiole, Castellina, Greve, and some bits of other. Uh, neighboring uh, um, communities, it's Chianti Classico. Okay. And the Black Rooster is a symbol of the Chianti Classico Consortium. The, wi the Chianti wine, plain Chianti, not Classico, it's something else. Doesn't is not produced in Chianti. Mm -hmm. It's produced outside the, the boundaries of the Chianti Classico and of the Chianti region. And it's produced uh, in, in, this, in a much larger area in Tuscany, mm -hmm. based with Sangiovese, uh, some s big similarities with the rules of the Chianti Classico, but it's not Chianti Classico. It, it goes up to Pisa in some extent, north and northeast of Florence, in Arezzo. So Chianti is produced, wine, Chianti wine is produced outside the Chianti region. In the Chianti region, there is Chianti Classico. So what's interesting, uh, and this is, I think, what's important and what we're hoping to uncover, is trying to remove confusion. 
So if I'm in America, let's say, and uh, you know I get a wine list and it's got all these wines on it, I walk into the wine store and there's their Italian wine section. I see, oh, Chianti. And I see Chianti, Chianti Classico, Chianti Classico Reserva. And I'm like, I, you know, are these all the same wines? What's it? So now you're just explaining the difference. Now I know from quality standpoint, typically Reserva is going to be a higher quality than a Chianti Classico. Yes. But is it typical that a Chianti Classico is a higher quality than just a plain Chianti, or is that not? This is a hairy question. Yeah. There are, um, averages, average, average speaking, the Chianti Classico, due to the soil composition, to the microclimate, and to a, another number of elements, is, uh, uh, is of, of higher quality, when one says. Mm -hmm. But this does not mean that other Chianti varieties, such as yeah. called Fiorentini or, or Colline Pisane, uh, are bad wines at all. They are very, very nice wines uh, over there as well. It's, I, I just wanted to, to point out the difference between Chianti Classico, which is the production of wine in the Chianti region, right. and other appellation of Chianti, which are outside the Chianti right. region. So these are maybe general rules. Um, what are, so what are there sub-regions in Chianti that, that are the areas that qualify as being a part of the DOC of Chianti? Of Chianti Classico. Yeah, Classico. There are very, very exact boundaries uh, from the 19, from 1924 even, or set by law. Mm -hmm. uh, entirely, you have the the territory of uh, Radda mm -hmm. in Chianti, Gaiola in Chianti, Castellina in Chianti, the three uh, uh, belt, uh, central belt communities, mm -hmm. very um, there's there's much forest. There's a lot of biodiversity in this area, mm -hmm. and then you have to the north, more to Firenze, you have the community of Greve in Chianti. Mm -hmm. So the four, the four communities are uh, entirely within the the boundaries of the um, Chianti Classico appellation, and then you have bits of in the north of bits of uh, of communities of San Casciano Val di Pesa. Mm -hmm. a bit more to the north to Firenze, Barberino Valdelsa, Tavernelle, and to the south you have a little bit of, well, quite, quite a bit of, of the comune of uh, Castelnuovo Berardenga. But they're all kind of, you know, outer belt, if you want. But the, they're still part of the They're Chianti still part Classico. of. Mm -hmm. So you have, you, have, you have the right to produce Chianti Classico if you are uh, recorded officially within these boundaries with your vineyards. What's your personal philosophy in winemaking? How do you approach it? Actually, uh, trying to understand what grows here, why it has been growing here for so many centuries, mm -hmm. and uh, mm, trying to bring it out in its potential and to translate it in a good bottle of wine. So more listening. Mm -hmm and uh, fine-tuning. A good wine is produced outside in the vineyards. So you have our main work and duty is to, to do, to work, to set all our skills in grapes as, as healthy as possible within uh, those conditions and to bring them to the cellar and to let them develop. So you, so you want to show whatever that crop happens to give you as compared to trying to manipulate the wine after you pick it? Assolutamente. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. It's actually there. There are two different philosophies. You were saying mm. there are, I think, wines which are born in the vineyards, and and there are cellar wines. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you can do almost everything mm -hmm. through technology and through chemistry, and so you can even turn almost wine out of water. Mm -hmm. It was once a speciality of one single man. But it has become uh, <laughs> rather common. <laughs> this is not what we do. Right. Wine industry, it's to me more beverage industry. Mm -hmm. Wine making of wine growers, as we are doing in Radda, is, uh, is, another, is another stuff. That's a very interesting distinction. You know, the more industrial, I guess, approach is uh, we're in the beverage in industry. Mm -hmm. So we want to serve up beverages that people will buy as compared to winemaking being more of an art? Definitely. I mean, real winemaking is uh, one of the oldest skills of mankind. You have wine in the Bible, so it goes back yeah. 6,000 years from now. 
uh, all civilization in the West has in the well, in, also in, in Mid Asia and in the West has been accompanied by winemaking. Yeah. So there is really big, big experience uh, beyond it. The point is to refine and to improve what you have, which is a territory, which is a, or, uh, many um, varieties. Uh, uh, not to change them, but to make them become what they can become mm -hmm. without much interference, I would say. This is my way of seeing it. So it's, there's a lot of respect, mm -hmm. of understanding, of, of listening, of, of hearing, if you want and of tasting in, in what we do. And m what is most of the work of, of, uh, of the winemakers and wine growers in, in Chianti Classico is, therefore is maybe, that it's maybe one of the secret of the extremely diffuse quality of the wines. Mm. How many bottles per year does your winery produce? No, we're very, we are a very small uh, family estate. We produce about 35, 38,000 bottles a year. So in micro. Yeah, and then uh, what are the different labels? How many different wines do you make? We produce mainly Chianti Classico, which is almost entirely Sangiovese. We produce a Riserva in the best uh, vintages, which is 100% Sangiovese from the old vines, mm -hmm. still from my father ones, which we keep very jealously. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, a couple of, uh, one red wine, one reservoir wine, and one some would tell it, say it, it's, it's super Tuscan, but I call it a good, nice Vino Rosso, a bit different than a <laughs> Chianti Classico, always Sangiovese and other selection. So that's it. My ancestors were Italian, so I, I love hearing Italian accents. Yours is a bit unusual. <laughs> so uh, I, I hear almost a little bit of a British accent. Uh, where does that come from? Uh, well, Italy, it's a, it's a country of immigrants mm. and immigrants, always been. Uh, in a certain way, we, I consider myself to be also one of them. We emigrated from northern Italy to uh, Chianti in the 70s, I was saying. Mm -hmm. And my father is a, my, my family is actually a mixed family. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother was British and she was, she came over to Tuscany living with us and she couldn't, she couldn't speak any Italian. So I had to, to start learning seriously English to speak with her. I, I think I, it's her, it has been her, her, her big thing, bringing me, starting with me to learn English. Therefore, probably, I have a British accent. <laughs> okay, now I understand it. What do you want the world to know about uh, Chianti Classico um, in general? You know, people are starting to, trying to learn about wines, understand them. Um, what, what do you think, if you could say, this is the one thing I would like the world to know about uh, Chianti Classico wine? And then uh, maybe more specifically after that about your wine. I think Chianti Classico wine is uh, coming from this little region, which is Chianti, in the heart of Tuscany. And uh, this is the, the origin, mm -hmm. the location, the fact that which is uh, rooted in a very, very long history and uh, is preserved. Mm -hmm. We managed to preserve this pot on earth and not to ruin it, which is would be would have been very very easy, mm -hmm. unfortunately. The Chianti Classico production area has between 30 and 40 percent of uh, organic uh, run estates. So yes. the vineyards are in Chianti Classico uh, so much already organic and it's growing. Mm -hmm. In Radling Chianti, the percentage is even higher. Mm -hmm. The organic uh, run vineyards mm -hmm. in the comune of Radin Chianti are between 60 and 17 percent. So oh, it's wow. a very, very high. Mm -hmm. So there's a big um, commitment also to to the environment mm -hmm. and to produce wine in a sust sustainable way, mm -hmm. not uh, 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 polluting ourselves and you. Yes, drinking you. our wines. <laughs> We're very committed to this. Yeah. And I think in, the, in 2019, this is a very, very important issue to know. I mean, we are all more aware, the more and more aware of, of how we feed uh, ourselves, what we drink, what we eat. And I think one has to know uh, m m m the more and more better how things are produced and, yes. and, and how the producers of food and of wine 
uh, get on with environment and with awareness, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, not to be uh, pathetic, but there is really a, a very urgent point in, in our planet. So yeah. I think working in this way, it's very important. And um, we, are, we are trying our best in Chianti Classico, actually. And Chianti Classico has applied to become an official site of UNESCO, so uh, Human Heritage, mm. uh, which would take some time, but uh, it's also because of this yeah. balance and, and because of this awareness of, of, of winemakers also, uh, which is going to be possible probably. Terrific. Well, Roberto, I very much appreciate uh, you sharing all this experience and the, the background about uh, Chianti Classico and also about your, your wine specifically. Uh, I learned a lot from speaking with you, so thank you. Thanks to you, it's been a great pleasure, really. As you can see, Roberto is very intelligent and a bit of a philosopher, and I loved learning about his philosophy in winemaking, and I was really glad to be able to share that with you, so thanks for taking that journey with me. I see categories on a menu uh, many times when we look at wine lists called uh, Super Tuscan. What does that mean? Super Tuscan is a, a fictitious uh, term. Uh, for Italians, it does not really mean anything because it's not associated into a lot of categories. But I think we got to know in the U.S. what Super Tuscan is, uh, is and, and is usually referred to a wine that has to be made in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's produced with a category. If you look on the label, they are all with the classification of IGT. Mm -hmm. And so you're taking the boundaries of Tuscany as a region as your growing ground. And then, uh, and, and then usually uh, Super Tuscan are known for uh, Cabernet Heavy or French Bordeaux blends mm -hmm. or wines that are usually wanting to come out of the boundaries of where they're defined. Mm -hmm. It was a term that um, was created to give flexibility and the creativity to the winemakers in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the Super Tuscan term uh, can vary from 100% of Sangiovese to 100% of Cabernet to 100% of almost anything that you want as long as it's grown in Tuscany. Would, would you say a uh, Super Tuscan is built more old world or new world style? Uh, I would probably say uh, Super Tuscan are more uh, New World style. Mm -hmm. uh, they're definitely showcasing Tuscany as a region. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time uh, they have um, um, international grapes that are part of uh, their blend. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely they, they showcase a winemaker in an area more than the, ter the terroir. When do you like to drink uh, Super Tuscans? What do you, yeah, when do you go into the shelf and say, I'm going to have one of these today? Uh, Super Tuscan sometimes uh, for me are uh, lift, lift her up. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel a little sad or a li I'm a little mad. I, I need uh, energy. I need I need someone to pick me up. They Super, make you happy. They, Super Tuscan make me happy. Uh, <laughs> they are they are voluptuous. Mm -hmm. uh, they are they are filled with uh, fruit. They are filled with uh, structure. Um, and um, they are wines that definitely put a smile on my face. Yeah. They are wines that. Um, uh, they can be also for me good uh, by themselves uh, because they have this beautiful complexity or they can be paired with, uh, with good, good, good food. Thanks so much for being here and watching that video. And can I ask you to please subscribe to our channel so you can find out when we're posting new content. You'll be alerted right away when we do to share this with people you think might benefit from the information, and certainly it helps us if you like the video. So if you like what you just saw, go ahead and hit that like button. And again, thank you so much for being here with me right now.